Hi guys, this is Mehul Mehta and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, one of my follower reached out to me and asked me, you know, hey Mehul, like, um, I'm confused between which career path to follow. Should I follow quant finance or should I follow data science? So, you know, like, so if you are someone who's also confused between these two, uh, let me help you by understanding, like, of course, like uh, how how different these two career paths are. Uh, so first of all, if you are someone who likes mathematics, statistics, numbers, then definitely I can say that, you know, you are you are really good to go for these two profiles. That is, you know, data science, machine learning or let's say quant finance, because uh, end of day, what they are working mostly on is, you know, a lot of number crunching uh, uh, they work on. So definitely if you if you are if you are a number guy or if you are someone who likes who likes to uh, you know play with numbers then definitely these two fields are for you but to understand like to differentiate these two fields uh, so you see if you are a, if you are if you choose uh, quant finance as your career path right so you will be either working so in the end let's say you graduate with a let's say quant finance degree right so in the end, you will be mostly working for banks. Uh, then we have insurance company. Then we have brokerage houses, uh, trading firms, high frequency trading firms. So so you know you will be mostly working in uh, uh, in these firms. But let's say if you are if you if you want to become a data scientist, right? So when you graduate uh, as a data scientist, right? Uh, so you'll be most so you can work in variety of sectors. You can work in healthcare. You can you can work in technology. Uh, then you have e-commerce e -commerce industry. Uh, then of course we have, uh, you can also work for the finance industry, right? So this is like, you know, so if, so if you, if, so you need to decide like which area you want to follow. Like if you're someone who's very focused, okay, you know, uh, I want to go into finance and you know, this is something that I want to follow till, till the end of my life. Um, definitely quant finance is like a good to go degree to pursue well if you're someone who thinks you know uh let, let's say i'm i'm from a i'm from a background you know let's say i'm from uh, my parents are like doctors and i enjoy doing that you know kind of uh, research on clinical or stuff or something like that right and i i, I feel like even though i like numbers but I uh, I like numbers in a different domain and not in finance. So let's say you know come some some if you are someone like that, then I I feel like you should definitely go for data science. So this is like the first thing. Second thing is and this is like a misconception that I really want to clarify. People say that if you want to earn money, you should go you should go in finance, and that is like the worst advice anyone can give you. Okay, uh, because I have heard a lot of times like you know people saying, hey, if you want to earn good money, go in finance. I have seen people in both the in you know in the low spectrum, or uh, you know wherein they are earning like these really like. Uh, decent money and it's not like great money like what people talk about and i've also seen people who make like great money so i have seen you know people from both the spectrum uh, and and one thing which i can say what differentiates both of them is their passion for what they do so some so you know there are times when you you just follow someone's advice okay you know oh, let me go into this field just because you know uh, even though I might not have a great passion towards it, but yes, uh, the money is great. So, you know, I can make good money. I mean, that doesn't work, work in, in this field. I mean, you really need to, you really need to be uh, someone who's passionate about, you know, let's say building models or let's say risk management, maybe pricing different asset uh, or, you know, trading, right? So you need to be really uh, passionate. I, I mean, of course not, it, it, if you are someone who has not discovered up till now, let's say if you are someone who, 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 who let's say, uh, I have not discovered, okay, you know, I have never built any trading strategy or let's say I have never done any risk management kind of thing. That is still fine. You just, you, you try to explore that. You try to explore it, but uh, don't just come into account finance just because it offers a good amount of money. Because I have seen data scientists who earn, who earn good amount of money too. So it's not like, you know, so let me come into this field just for money and let me just, you know, reject this field. So don't do this mistake. Uh, so uh, coming on, like what kind of subjects will you be learning uh, in, let's say, quant finance versus data scientist? So let me first talk about data science, right? I mean, uh, I've spoken to many of my uh, friends who have done, uh, let's say, a master's degree in data science who have done like, uh, so, so 
uh, I have made like a comprehensive list. Uh, so what they have learned mostly is, let's say they have learned pa uh, Power BI or Tableau, which is for let's say data visualization. Uh, then they definitely learn uh, py different programming languages like Python and R. Um, and then they learn like um, uh, machine learning. They also learn uh, natural language processing. So these two, you know, I, I have spoken to many people and they say like these two are like uh, common subjects where what they are taught in their master's degree. So uh, apart from that, they are also taught like SQL and big data analytics. So the whole world uh, works around, you know, data and, you know, either you can visualize data or you can use data to predict something or something like that. The entire world of a data scientist is to work on huge chunk of data, process it and build a model which can predict the future or even if not the future, but at least it can give some good insights about what's happening inside the business, inside the business. But let's see a life of a quant, right? So uh, if if you are, let's say, pursuing a degree in quant finance, I'll, I'll tell you about the subjects that you will learn. First is definitely statistics is like uh, in your first semester only they'll be teaching you statistics because statistics is a major chunk of all the financial theories, uh, both mathematics and statistics like they are a good chunk of all the different advanced financial theories, okay, which are in quant finance. So definitely statistics, uh, then you'll be learning financial risk management. Uh, then there are some uh, subjects like uh, options and derivatives or people says derivatives. Uh, we have uh, one more market like uh, like we have derivative market. There is one more market which is called the fixed income market. So you have fixed income also. Uh, so you also, you'll also learn fixed income. Then there are some advanced subjects like stochastic calculus, uh, Monte Carlo simulation that you'll be learning in this degree. Uh, one more thing is uh, in some of the some of the university they also offer uh, a module in data science and machine learning. So there'll be one or two courses which talks about data science, both data science and machine learning. So you'll be definitely learning about that. So like this is like uh, the major difference between these two degrees and like what you can expect in these two different degrees. See, I know like uh, when I spoke about a Monte Carlo simulation, stochastic calculus, for you, you know, you might not understand these terms, right? So just to clarify, you know, there are times when um, when some problem statement cannot be solved using equations. And that's where we use the concept of Monte Carlo. We simulate something a lot of times, right? So that's where the concept of Monte Carlo comes in. These all are like very interesting concepts and very interesting subjects, I feel. But it's just that you as a newcomer might not know what is Monte Carlo or what is stochastic calculus. I understand you might be you might be knowing calculus, uh, but maybe not about stochastic calculus, which is totally fine. I'm not saying, OK, you know, you should you should you should be knowing everything from day one, even when I uh, stochastic calculus, I never knew it when I came to my master's degree. That's where I learned both about Monte Carlo and stochastic calculus in advance. OK, so so don't worry if you if you don't know about it. Uh, so one last thing which I want to say, which I want to say is um, you, you'll have to decide like um, which career path you want to try. Um, I mean, you want to focus on and the best thing or uh, if you're com really confused, I would say try to explore, try to read stuff. Or uh, maybe if you, if let's say risk management, right? They are they try to read, let's say something on market risk, something on credit risk. If that excites you, then you know I feel like you should actually jump into it. If you are someone who, who let's say uh, likes to build different dashboards, right, for your clients, then I believe you are a data science guy. You know you can build good amount of dashboards using Power BI and Tableau. So I feel like the end of it, it depends a lot on what you want to pursue, uh, you know, in your career. But one one thing which I really would highlight is please don't come into quant finance just for money because I've seen people coming in and dropping out because they, they didn't understand much of it and they realized, you know, it was just uh, for them. It was a waste of money and waste of time. So please don't come in quant finance for money. Uh, of course, they'll be long uh, in quant if you work for uh, because uh, I've seen a lot of people saying, hey, if you are working for quant finance, you'll have to work uh, long shifts, long hours. I feel it's it's everywhere. Now I feel eight to 10 hours you have to work everywhere. Now, if you're working for trading firms or high frequency trading firms, of course, you'll have to work 12, 13 hours. But again, they'll 
compensate you with that amount of work that and extra work that you are putting in for them right so don't worry on the workers because i feeling more or less even if you're a data scientist so i was talking to one friend of mine and he said you know uh, there was this machine learning model which was in production right and it got uh, broke uh, it it broke down so they had to work whole night just to fix it so it's not like uh, the data pipelines and uh, let's say uh, like data pipelines which are created by data scientists you know they don't have to i mean it's I mean, they don't need to, their data science, uh, scientists do not need to work for long hours. No, that is completely wrong. Both in both the cases, um, I, I'll say don't shy away from work. You'll have, you, you might have to work long hours or let's say maybe small hours, but don't shy uh, from work. It's just that find which area interests you. And I hope like this video might have helped you. And if you have any more doubts, please uh, let me know. Thank you.